The Alabama Farmers Federation and the Alabama Farmers Cooperative proudly present Simply Southern with your hosts, Jim Allen and Mary Johnson. Good morning and welcome to Simply Southern. I'm Mary Johnson. And I'm Jim Allen. Today we're talking about jobs on Simply Southern and how there aren't enough graduates to fill the need for people to work in Alabama's number one industry, agriculture. Cattle are a common sight along Alabama roadways, but today we'll take you to a museum, or a museum, to the state's beef industry. And Sidney Phelps of Bonnie Plants will show us how to protect our gardens from late frost. But up first, the heart of Birmingham is one of the last places you'd expect to find a herd of goats. But at Red Mountain Park, these browsing animals are helping restore and re-energize historic land that's been neglected for nearly 50 years. There's nothing quite like sitting down to a home-cooked meal with fresh vegetables from the garden. With Bonnie Plants from your local quality co-op store, you can enjoy the freshest vegetables right from your own backyard. And no matter if you're a raised bed gardener, a rose gardener, or if you farm hundreds of acres, your quality co-op store has exactly what you need to get the most out of your plants. You'll always find what you need, plus friendly, knowledgeable advice at your local quality co-op store. There's one near you. The blessing of Alabama agriculture is more than three meals a day. It means independence from foreign nations, freedom to pursue other jobs and activities, conservation of natural resources, and preservation of family values. For 93 years, the Alabama Farmers Federation has brought together the men and women whose work fills our plates and fuels the American dream. Nothing brings the family together like U.S. farm-raised catfish. American catfish farmers are dedicated to producing a premium, healthy catfish with a consistently mild, sweet flavor. Because we take as much pride in our work as you do in your cooking. From our family farms to your family's table, you can be sure you're getting the highest quality fish. Because your family deserves the best. U.S. farm-raised catfish. The way we communicate is always changing. My friends and I text a lot when we can't be together, and even when we are. As an Alpha agent, even my customers text me. It's just the world we live in, and it works. It's another way we provide great customer service. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. Just try texting an 800 number. Clearing over a thousand acres is a huge undertaking, but it's a tremendously tasty task for the workers of Goat Busters. The company has a herd of 150 goats living at Red Mountain Park in Birmingham. While the goats think they've got it made with a smorgasbord of kudzu and privet to eat, they're actually doing important work to change the landscape of a historic mountain. Red Mountain Park was established in 2007 and now encompasses 1,500 acres of land in Birmingham. While parts are open to the public, other portions of the park are covered with invasive vines, shrubs, and trees. That's where Goat Busters comes in. We, we have mapped out this amazing infestation of, of the invasive plants and it looked like almost all of our development money was going to go towards removal. But we, we tried chemicals, we tried steam, we tried mowing it with forestry heads, and then we hit on browsing. They were here for about 10 days. Goats gobbled up two acres of ground in just 10 days. Those 50 goats. The herd of 150 goats moved into the park in October 2015 and has cleared more than 60 acres. The Goat Busters Company owner, Jace Goodling, said using goats to clear land has plenty of environmental benefits. With goats, you have an animal that's going to remove all of the green, soft plant matter and turn it into fertilizer in 24 hours. So bad stuff is turned into good stuff immediately. I mean, in, in, a, in an environmental time sense, that's immediate. As an additional benefit, the goats eat without destroying or covering up the numerous artifacts found on Red Mountain, which was home to iron ore mines, factories, and towns for almost a century, from 1863 until 1962. I don't want to walk on our history and destroy our history. 
goats reveal all of that to me because I can't really get down through that stuff. It's, it's so, so thick. It used to take me hours and hours and hours just to walk half a mile. And now today <laughs> I can see things. I can go out and find things. The goats clear the land, but park officials must continue to manage it to keep invasive species from coming back. They've developed a system that combines goat browsing, mulching, targeted herbicides, and overseeding native species to restore the forests of Red Mountain. That's the process, and it's, it's worked very well to the tune of over 200 acres of restored land here at, at Red Mountain in two years. We use the goats as a tool. It's not a single solution to the problem of invasive plants. Um, it's not going to, to fix it uh, in one day nor one year. While Red Mountain Park already boasts 14 miles of trails and other attractions, full park development will take another 30 years. But the goats have already helped speed up that timeline. It has been very rewarding for us to have worked with them and watched them in their amazement of what the goats have gotten done in these short three month time span. And for Goodling, Goat Busters is a nice break from his stressful day job in Virginia as a custom home builder. You're out here with a bunch of goats just munching around. The most excitement you have is a guard dog barking at somebody's pedestrian dog going by. Um, schedule wise, when will we be done? When the goats finish eating. When is that? Ask the goats. That's the pressure. There's no pressure. After the spring kidding season, Goodling's herd will almost double, and he'll be looking for other clients in the southeast who need land cleared. If you've got a backyard or a property that's overgrown, who are you going to call? Goat Busters, of course. For landowners interested in using Goat Busters, Goodling will come out, survey the land, and then he provides an estimate. And his crew sets up an electric net fence, lets the goats and guard dogs loose, and at the end, they just take it all up once the land is clear. I bet those goats uncovered a lot of historical artifacts while they were there. They, they really are, and they're continuing to do that at Red Mountain Park. Buildings, foundations, little artifacts. They even found a fully intact tractor and harrow that somebody just left. Wow, that's amazing. It really is. Coming up next, where's the beef? Samantha Carpenter and a posse of little buckaroos are finding out right after this break. Alabama soybean farmers help fuel the state's economy. Soybeans are used to make clean, renewable biodiesel and are a key ingredient in feed for poultry, catfish, and livestock. Soybeans are used in dozens of products we use every day. But best of all, soybean farmers generate $258 million and more than 4,000 jobs for Alabama's economy all while helping conserve our natural resources. Explore the power of soy. Today's farming operation is more complex than ever before, with precision agriculture becoming an integral piece of farm management. AccuField provides precision agriculture technologies and site-specific management capabilities in a simplified and interactive format, helping you put all the pieces of the farming puzzle together. For more information, visit us at www.accufield.com. Seriously? Have some respect. Pick it up, man. Did you just litter? Take pride in your school. Pick it up, man. Clean it up, dude. Besides keeping your campus clean, adopt a mile with Roadside Cleanup. Attend the next Coastal Cleanup Day or pitch in on the annual Spring Cleanup Campaign. Make a difference by picking up litter and... Don't drop it on Alabama! For nearly 50 years, the Electric Cooperatives of Alabama have been giving young people an opportunity to visit our nation's capital, where they learn about the value of electric cooperatives and the importance of grassroots advocacy. Top students join with thousands of others touring monuments, landmarks, and meeting with their congressional delegation. The Rural Electric Youth Tour Program. Just one more way the Electric Cooperatives of Alabama are investing in the future of our state. Beef, it's what's for dinner. And it's a major part of the agricultural industry that makes up so much of our economy. Naturally, educating the public on the role cattle have played both today 
and throughout our history is vitally important to the folks at the Alabama Cattlemen's Association. And for 20 years now, they've made school field trips to our state capital more fun doing just that. Samantha Carpenter takes us on a trip to the museum to find out more. A lot of school buses pass by the Alabama Cattlemen's Association's headquarters in downtown Montgomery. With neighbors like the State Capitol Building, the Archives, and the State House, they practically sit in a state history classroom. We uh, knew fourth graders came to the Capitol and, and the Archives, so we said it would probably help us in our fundraising effort to have a something to, to capture these school children. We did a lot of research. The people at the archives helped us a lot to come up with the museum to tell the story of the cattle industry. There's a lot for children to see at the museum. After meeting the facility's resident cowboy, Adam Bainbridge, rooms of interactive fun fill exhibits featuring kitchens, costumes, and all things cow. They can um, see the byproducts case like, wow, you know, that comes from a cow, I never knew that. Yeah, it does. And um, then see the footage that was filmed back in those days, you know, the old cowboy footage, and then they love going in the back. That's more of our interactive area, so they can dress up like a cowboy, get in the rodeo barrel, touch Coco our cow. It's bright, it's colorful, and kids have a lot of fun here. But there's a little something to learn here at the museum, just about everywhere you look. Alabama is a big cattle state. It's the second largest ag commodity in the state. It's a really great place for them to come in and connect what they see to what they're learning about in school and just kind of bridge that gap. From feeding the pioneers that settled our state to making up many of the familiar products we use today, cattle play a vital and often poorly understood place in our daily lives. The museum is not only an introduction for these kids to this dietary staple, but also the industry that has played a historically important role here in Alabama. This is where we teach them a little bit about what cattle producers do on a daily basis and what the, what the farmers expect out of their cattle. Cattlemen care about their animals and they care about the product and the person who eats the product. The relationship has not only been beneficial for the cattle industry, but educators enjoy the opportunity to expose their students to where their food comes from. Even with the uh, cow behind me, they were just uh, really excited when they walked in and saw their cow. They was asking me, Ms. Davidson, is it a real cow? Is it a real cow? I told them, I said, at one time it was a real cow. <laughs> this experience helped them to have a better understanding that beef comes from cow, especially with the uh, packs of meat that they saw back there. In the 20 years since opening, the museum has seen hundreds of thousands of school children pass through their doors. But a good thing tends to get around. The thing that's been, I think, a surprise has been the increasing number of uh, people that are doing a walking tour of downtown Montgomery. We are designated as a capital cool spot, and the uh, Chamber of Commerce has us on their map of things to do, so we have more people uh, coming through. We want this to be a place where it's effective for three-year-olds up to you know, 83 year olds. We want anybody who comes in here to be able to learn something and have an enjoyable experience. We hope that children not only leave here knowing about the beef cattle process, but that they learn that beef, the product, is a healthy, wholesome, nutritious product that is safe for families to eat and delicious for families to eat. I mean, who doesn't love beef? For Simply Southern, I'm Samantha Carpenter. While it's become a popular stop for Alabama students and tourists visiting the capital, the museum has even drawn interest from as far away as England, with some London natives recently making a stop on their cross-country American tour. It sounds like we really need to hoof on over for a moving experience. I oh, know you didn't say that. <laughs> no, I have a little cheese to go with that burger. <laughs> You're too funny. When Simply Southern continues, unemployment is something we typically hear a lot about during an election year. Up next, we'll tell you about one industry in Alabama that has more jobs available than there are people to fill them.
Alabama wheat and feed grain farmers grow food, fuel, and freedom. Their harvest helps feed Alabama's multi-million dollar livestock, catfish, and poultry industries while reducing America's dependence on foreign countries for energy and food. By combining their strength with farmers of other commodities, feed grain growers are fueling the economic growth of Alabama communities. Support healthy food from local farmers by purchasing a Farming Feeds Alabama license plate. The TAG funds education and promotion efforts, including Ag in the Classroom, Agricultural Scholarships, and Youth Programs. Get your Ag Tag today. Nothing brings the family together like U.S. farm-raised catfish. American catfish farmers are dedicated to producing a premium, healthy catfish with a consistently mild, sweet flavor because we take as much pride in our work as you do in your cooking. From our family farms to your family's table, you can be sure you're getting the highest quality fish because your family deserves the best. U.S. farm-raised catfish. Agriculture is Alabama's number one industry, contributing $70 billion to the economy and employing nearly 600,000 people. But as Kevin Worthington tells us, there is some concern that there aren't enough college graduates to keep pace with this growing industry. Growing up in North Alabama, Auburn University senior Jonathan Roberts always knew he wanted to work in the poultry industry. Gap County, where I'm from, we have it's the second largest county for poultry behind Coleman. But you know, just driving down the road, you see chicken houses on the side. You know, just really got me you know wondering. You know, I wanted to be a vet when I was smaller. You know but really didn't want to go to vet school, so I just chose poultry because it's, it seemed to be more my, my suit. Mobile native Nadia Sigler wasn't as sure about her career path when she started Auburn. She switched from pharmacy to the College of Agriculture right after her freshman year. And I talked to one of my advisors and she told me about this major and also talked to Dr. Fields and I liked everything that I heard and he said there's a 100% job placement after you graduate. so. I was thinking, why not? I think I like it. What sets these two seniors apart from other students is that they have jobs lined up more than three months before they get their diplomas. I only really, really applied for USDA jobs. Um, I had one interview for the market reporter position in Montgomery and I landed it. So I was just a big sigh of relief after that. Um, I actually interviewed with five companies and I had three follow-back interviews. I'm still receiving more follow-back interviews, but I already have a job, so. The Dean of Auburn's College of Agriculture says the job market is strong for his grads because there simply aren't enough people graduating with ag degrees to satisfy the demand. According to a study by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and Purdue University, the number of available jobs increased by about 3,500 in each of the last five years. And I think there's you know, two factors that have been pushing that. You know, one is just demographics. You know, we're seeing the baby boomers, you know, are aging out and retiring. The other factor that uh, I see driving strong demand for agriculture is just growing global demand. And so many of your large agribusiness firms are gearing up for expanded sales in international markets. And so they're, they're looking for talent. Another significant factor is technology. Dr. Patterson says fresh young minds are needed to develop new farming tools and innovative methods of growing the nation's food and fiber. He says salaries vary by field, but many agriculture graduates can expect a higher starting pay than a lot of non-ag students. Most of our graduates are going out in that mid-40 to 50 range in terms of a starting salary, which, you know, is, is pretty good uh, right now. Roberts and Sigler say they feel fortunate to have jobs waiting on them because both know students in other fields who are still looking for jobs when they graduate. I feel good now. I'm, I can actually rest and focus on my classes and graduate, so I'm pretty happy. For Simply Southern, I'm Kevin Worthington. To encourage more people to enter the field, many organizations, including the Alabama Farmers Federation and Alabama Farmers Cooperative, provide thousands of dollars in scholarships each year to students studying agriculture. 
you know, a lot of our scholarship recipients end up coming to work for a part of AFCA, so we help them and they help us. Right, so that scholarship application is just helping get their foot in the door. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Coming up next, spring is an exciting time for gardeners, but Sydney Phelps of Bonnie Plants reminds you to consider the possibility of a late season frost as you plant this year's garden. When AJ was born with a heart defect, we practically lived at the hospital. We weren't prepared for that. My Alpha customers, my Alpha family made sure we had everything we needed. Now I'm even more motivated to help take care of them. Who I am fits what I do. I am Alpha. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. What one thing can you say about your local quality co-op store? You can trust us. You get what you need for your farm, for your lawn and garden, and the safest products for your pets. We're locally owned and operated, and you can trust that we care about our community and the people in it. So if you're a raised bed gardener, a rose gardener, or if you farm hundreds of acres, the Quality Co-op Store has exactly what you need to get the job done. All this plus friendly, knowledgeable advice. Your Quality Co-op Store. There's one near you. Support healthy food from local farmers by purchasing a Farming Feeds Alabama license plate. The tag funds education and promotion efforts, including Ag in the Classroom, Agricultural Scholarships, and Youth Programs. Get your Ag Tag today. We believe a plant should be more than a plant. This one is. It's all you need for your garden to succeed. Because it's a Bonnie plant. It represents hundreds of varieties of Bonnie's quality veggies and herbs. But more, it's from generations of Bonnie people who are passionate about sharing their love of gardening with you. Look for this little Bonnie plant and a whole family of plants like it in your garden center. Bonnie plants, so you'll know how to grow. Hey folks, Sydney Phelps here with Bonnie Plants. Now today we want to talk about frost protection. Early spring, that's something that you really need to be concerned with about your garden and able to keep those plants safe when the cold weather snaps. For example, I've got some cold crop here in front of me today. Cold crop is, well the reason it's called cold crop is it really handles cool weather the best. That's why you start your early spring gardens off with them. It's the same thing with the fall gardens. The thing about the cold crop is you want to still be able to go out to the garden and rinse off any frost first things in the morning uh, if you have anything that's especially tender. But your lettuces, your cabbage, your chard, your kales, all of these work great whenever you get a frost. Now, your tomatoes and peppers are what you really need to be concerned with, as well as some annuals that you might have in your garden. A good way to do that is to use buckets. Now, you may have uh, extra feed buckets, five gallon buckets, depending on what you've got in your garden. But if your tomatoes in the garden or your peppers in the garden, you basically just want to take that and cover it. Now, you want to make sure there's no holes in there. We've got holes in this one, and an easy way for that is just using a duct tape. And you just take your tape, rip it off, and fill the holes. Now, that's going to allow any frost or cool weather to come off uh, and stay out from where your plants are. So, you basically just want to tear the tape off. You've got holes in the top, holes in the sides. You basically just want to cover them up. So, find all your holes, cover them up, and you're good. The thing about using any type of container or bucket is you want to get this off before the temperature heats because it's going to basically be a greenhouse effect and kind of baking the plant. So as soon as you can, remove this once the frost thread is clear. So that's an example of using oversized containers to cover plants. The next step that you can use, and probably one of the better uses, is a frost cloth. Now if you don't have frost cloth, you have bed sheets, towels, depending on what they are, frost cloth basically you just lay that out and drape it over your plants. Now, in a situation like this, you don't want it touching the plant. Uh, if you've got shrubbery or anything like that, it's okay. But for your garden plants, you want to kind of pitch a tent around it. Use stakes, uh, poles, anything that you have. Um, I've got a stake here to stay up off of the plant whenever it's growing. Uh, when you do that, it'll allow it to set up and be covered from the frost. Same idea from using the buckets and tubs as a frost cloth and just removing that as the morning starts off. So before you get uh, you know, going, you know that thread of frost is clear, you wanna make sure you get whatever you've got covered 
out of there. Now, if you've got this base and you've got room to build a small greenhouse or cover over your raised beds, let's show you an example of something you can do right in your backyard to save that space. Now, this is a simple project that was built here at the farm to use to hang hanging baskets. But the good thing about this is it's the same measurements as a raised bed. So you measure out your floor plan, use two by fours, and you can build it easily out of PVC or scrap. It doesn't even have to be this high. Put a cover over it, you've got an instant greenhouse for those early season crops. If you want to find more information out about how to protect your plants, go to bonnieplants.com or check out the app Homegrown with Bonnie Plants in the App Store. Yeah, a lot of people actually use Good Friday as kind of their target to start planning, but you'll probably be better protected from frost if you wait until a specific date on the calendar because Good Friday moves around a lot. Early 2007, April 2007, I planted my garden right after Good Friday and regretted it. Mm -hmm. Everything got mowed to the ground, the frost got it. So exactly. You have to yeah. watch what you're doing. Yep, an unseasonably warm mar March and everybody gets really excited about planting, yeah. but you still need to wait. Oh yeah, oh yeah. In addition to tips on growing, plant selection, and other topics, bonnieplants.com has a lot of other information on how to protect your garden. For more information on the other stories we featured today, visit their websites. If you need some land cleared, who are you going to call? Goat Busters! You can find out more about their operation at vagoatbusters.com. Or if you want to visit Red Mountain Park, all of that information is available at redmountainpark.org. You can take a virtual tour of the museum or plan a visit in person on the Alabama Cattlemen's Association website at bamabeef.org. And the College of Agriculture at Auburn University has everything you need if you're considering a career in a field related to agriculture. You'll find them online at agriculture.auburn.edu. You can watch previous episodes of our show and find out more about our crew at simplysouthern.tv.net or join hundreds of other viewers who follow our show by liking our Facebook page. Next Sunday morning, Samantha Carpenter is headed back to school as the teachers become the students. And we'll introduce you to some lucky racehorses that have found new purposes in life after their days on the track have ended. Thanks for joining us this week for Simply Southern. I'm Jim Allen. And I'm Mary Johnson. We hope you'll join us again next Sunday morning. Simply Southern is a production of the Alabama Farmers Cooperative and the Alabama Farmers Federation.